Amen. How are you? All right. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to be here. Um, when they when they called me some weeks ago, I I was I was wondering if I'll be able to come, but I thank God I'm able to be here. Amen. Amen. And I bring you greetings from everybody at at home. They all know that I am I'm here. Tell your tell your neighbor. Expect something big tonight. Tell another person, expect something wonderful tonight. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate Jesus with a clap of fingers this evening? Just wave your hands to Jesus and appreciate him. Lift your hands to Jesus. the Lord let your name be glorified you are the Lord let your name be glorified we give you glory and honor the Lord, let your name be glorified. You are my God, and your name is glorified.
illuminates the heart of everyone that hears it. Lord, I thank you because I know today somebody has had an encounter with you and after this night their life will not remain the same. I give you all the glory for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Can we celebrate Jesus? I said celebrate Jesus. I said celebrate Jesus. I said celebrate Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Once again, I'm happy to be here. Um, I was excited to see us dance. You, you are, you, you are really youths. There's, there's life in you. Yes. There's life in you. There's life in you. God bless you, sir. I don't know your name. What's your name, please? Pastor Wisdom. I didn't hear Pastor when I came. I heard another thing. I heard. It. What did they call him again? Uh, Apostle. Pastor Wisdom. You pastor a church or you're just pastor? You, you have a, a church where you pastor. Yeah, wonderful. Can we celebrate him? Please celebrate him. <laughs> Amen. Um, I, I came with two people from Uyo. One of them is a pastor in the ministry. And uh, on, his, on his own, he can handle the whole service on his own. He just came with me. Uh, that's Pastor Owen. Pastor Owen. Um, and I came with a, a, a young man. He's in the Bible school. Brother Promise. Celebrating. Amen. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Amen. Um, many people find it hard to pronounce my name. Um, if, you, if you watch f- f- football very well, there's a, a player that man you had some years ago, Dwight. My name is Dwight. Not do it, it's do it. <laughs> Amen. But I have other names that are easier for you to call. Oh, Ketchuku is my name also. So anyone you like is also good. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to reassure you, just in case, just in case anybody here has lost, uh, maybe you are now confused or you are losing faith. Your life will not remain the same. No. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm not saying if you believe, I'm just telling you that your life will not remain the same after today. Amen. Okay, let's go to the word of, of God. Straight to the word of God. This it's already 12, Abby. This morning. Yes. Go to the Lord God this, this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, I'll be preaching on, on the topic, matters of the heart. Matters of the heart. And then it's a subtopic called the force of meditation the force of meditation amen amen um okay let me start by saying this if you look at my left hand side there is the drum set there's the keyboard there are two keyboards the bass guitar and the, the lead guitar if I wanted to preach today and I said they should give me the bass guitar to use as a microphone, would it make, make sense? But when the bass guitar, well, when the bass guitarist plays the bass guitar, don't you hear it on this, the speaker? Let's, 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 let's communicate. When he plays the bass guitar, don't you hear it on the, on the sound system? You do, right? Does that mean that, that it's a microphone? Okay. Many of us don't know why God gave you a heart in the first place. I'm not saying your physical heart. I'm saying your spiritual heart. Many people don't know why God ever gave you a heart in the first place. And so, you as a human being or as a Christian, you you have a very powerful tool in your hand or at your disposal, but you don't know how to harness the potential of what you have. And what I want to share with you very briefly, I heard I have only one hour, 
and we've already en enjoyed ourselves so much. I want to give you an information that would help you for the rest of your life. Now, if you look at the book of, let's read two Bible verses. Isaiah 40, 31 and Matthew 12, 34. Isaiah 40, 31 and Matthew 12, 34. Isaiah 40 31. Is, is someone reading for me or I should read for myself? And Matthew 12 34. Matthew 12 34. Okay, I'll read for myself. I'll read for everybody. If you look at um, Matthew 40:31, it's very a very popular verse. It says, "They that wait upon the Lord, right? They shall do what? And they shall do what? And they shall what? Okay, let everybody say it." They that wait on the Lord shall what? From the front to the back. They that wait on the Lord shall what? Alright. Matthew 12, 34 says, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good and the evil person out of his evil, out of his evil treasure brings forth evil amen amen tell your neighbor my heart tell your neighbor my heart say my heart oh all right now every computer system has a set of programs or set of codes that make that system to function. Every uh, electrical gadget has at least one small chip inside that determines the function of that um, electrical gadget. The same way every human being has a system in you that you can program to determine the course of your life. Now, I'm, I'm sure you are, you, are, you are wondering how does Isaiah 40, 31 relate with Matthew 12, 34? Because none of them, they are powerful verses, but you're wondering what is the link between two of them. I would show you in a few minutes. Why am I saying this? No matter how powerful you think you are, they... they the programming of your heart determines the function of your life. There's a very famous quote that says, a group of dogs led by a lion will defeat a group of lions led by a dog. It's not in the size, or it is not the size of the dog that matters, but the fight in the dog. There is a very interesting thing that I've discovered. No matter how anointed a, a man is, God takes out time to work on that man's heart. No matter how gifted you are, no matter how much you can dance and jump up and down, no matter how the power of God moves when you say move, if your heart is, if your heart has an, an issue, you will not be able to function before God, as God demands of you. Because God always told us that men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Everybody here came out here to a dance, or most of us came out here to dance. Some may have been dancing because they bought a 
brand new shoe. I have learned the latest dance steps and people are hailing you. But God is saying something is, is, is missing here. Saul was a... Please reduce the volume a bit. Saul was a tall, well-built man. In fact, those days, if you're going to choose a, a, a king, you have to choose the biggest one. The most fearful one because when, you, when your king goes to war with you, when your enemy sees the kind of king that you are coming with, they might think twice of whether to go ahead or they should wait. That was why when Goliath stood in front of the whole army of Israel, even though, you see, the Bible never says how many people came with, with, with him or how big those people were. All it says about there was a giant in front of, of them and the whole army of, of Israel froze. Why? The person that was standing in front of them was mighty. And so when Samuel went to an, anoint the king of Israel because Israel was looking for a king and God said, go to the house of Jesse. All the sons of Jesse kept coming out. The first one came out well built, massive shoulders. He's, I'm sure his muscle will maybe as big as this speaker. He's very nice chin and everything. And Samuel the prophet, not Samuel the houseboy, the prophet, the one that God was showing things. The one who could see beyond what was being seen. In fact, at the age of, of 10, Samuel had heard God's voice. Some of us here, you have almost 20. You, maybe you've never heard anything. This is Samuel the prophet. He saw this well-built man and said, Oh, what a king. If this man goes to war, Israel will win every war. And uh, God said, uh, No. There is always a problem with God. When you look right, but your heart is wrong. There is always a problem with God. When you sound nice, but your heart is corrupt. There is always a problem with God when people hail you and they honor you and they lift you up. But something in your heart is not the way God expects it. Jesus stood before these men who were trying to be wise before him. And he said, you, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth is speaking. What was he, he saying? He was saying, what you are producing from your life is as a result of the engine of your life, which is what? Your heart. He was saying to them, you are speaking because you have sat down and you have let this thing ruminate in your heart for so long. And what you are saying is a product of who you are on the inside. God always starts to fix a man from the inside out. But men fix themselves from the outside in. We can put on makeup, dress nice, come here and be sick inside. But we all hail you because you are looking good. But when God wants to reach a man, he comes to your heart where the problem is. So Romans 10 verse 10 says, with the mouth you make culture unto what? Salvation. But with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the heart. So God arrests your heart from the beginning. Because no matter how God wants to, to save you, if your heart is in the wrong place, he cannot do much with you. Amen. 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 You can only function to the limit of the programming of your heart. Can I tell you this? There are many people who want to learn how to play this keyboard. But their heart he wants them to learn how to sell puff puff. Because for you to excel at anything in life, it must be driven from your heart. It takes hours to learn how to play this keyboard. You will stay awake in the night. People are sleeping. You are learning. They have called off um, strike now. Asu has ended the strike. And they have brought exams. The first week of school exam. Some people are having lecture in the night and they have exam the, the, the next day. 
it takes a person who is committed to say, this one, I will do it to the end. Amen. Amen. I'm getting somewhere. So, you discover that God is trying to fix an issue with man. And man's issue has always been the programming of his heart. Not the size of the man. Not how handsome the man is. That's always been man's heart. Amen. Amen. There is a thing about your heart that if you learn how to master it, you will be able to know what God is saying to you at any point in time. You will be able to relate with God easily. Why? There are three things you must know. The first one is this. When God speaks to you audibly, he speaks by the voice of your father or your prophet. When your angel speaks to you, he might speak to you with your own voice. So you hear somebody say, I heard somebody say to me, is your angel speaking to you? But when the Holy Spirit talks to you, he speaks from your heart. If you look at Romans 8, 26 to 20, 27. Romans 8, 26 to 20, 27. It says, he that wants to know the mind of God should search where? In his heart. Because from verse 26 it says that we know not how to pray. But the Holy Spirit helps us to pray and gives us what? What to pray about. The next line says that he that wants to know the mind of the Spirit must search what? The heart. Let me say this. Your prayer is not effective if your heart is not involved in that prayer. Your prayer is not powerful enough if your heart is not involved in that prayer. Why? Your heart is where the Holy Spirit gives you your prayer point. Are you here? Are you here? I said Romans 8, 26 to 27. You can write it and read it after. Your heart is where the Holy Spirit gives you information on what to pray about and how to direct you on what to do with your life. If ever you are confused in life, take out time and sit down. Don't shout. When it comes to matters of the heart, you, you don't shout in a prayer. No. You sit down and meditate in your heart. You sit down and let the word of God brood in your heart. You sit down and search within your heart. What is God saying to me? That is why if your heart is corrupt, it becomes difficult for you to sense what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Are you here? Are you here? So, everybody comes to a place where you have to learn how to guard the, the issues of your heart. Now, you see what I was saying in Isaiah 40, 31. That says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And I get to that part that says, out of the abundance of your heart. Then I come to that point that says, the Holy Spirit speaks in your heart. How do you hear the Holy Spirit in your heart? if you know how to wait on him. And the funny thing is this, the word wait in that in Isaiah 40, 31 actually means those that bind themselves. It is to bind yourself with God. It is not to sit down and think of what God wants to say. No. It is to bind yourself. So those that bind themselves to the Lord shall renew their strength. And it comes with what? Waiting on him. And waiting on God means that you sit down in the silence of your heart and let God speak to you. And until God gives you direction in your heart, you do not move from where you are. Many Christians don't know that the Holy Spirit speaks to them every day. They don't hear him. Why? Their heart is, is busy. Some of us, we are full of noise. You can't sit alone by yourself. You must talk throughout the whole day. If you master the art of medit meditation as a believer, you will see that you will become a mature Christian. And maturity is not in the, dis the display of power. No. Maturity is in the depth of God that is in your life. 
Now you see how Isaiah 1431 relates with where we read in this is Matthew. And the interesting thing is that even God operates by the same principles. God, God, your own God, the one that made the heavens and, and the earth, the one by whom nothing exists without him, operates on the same principle. If you look at Genesis 1, from verse 1 to 26, when God began to create, he kept saying, let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. Say, let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. Was God just speaking in anyhow? No. Why? How do I know? David in the book of Psalms says, What is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you are thinking of him? What is man that you are meditating of him? Before God made you, he sat down and thought about it. God sat down and had meditations in himself before he made anything that came out of him. Even God meditates. Even God takes out time to sit. Bible says, and he looked at what he made and he saw that it was good. So God even analyzed what he had made. How many of us have ever sat down in the silence of your heart to meditate on the word of, of God or about your own life what to do with, with your life many of us don't we sit down and you let you see when you understand this, this principle you will know why the Bible says in Proverbs 4 26 guard your heart is what all for out of this spring is what the issues of life. He was simply saying, you cannot go beyond the details of your heart. The problem with many Christians today is not that you cannot pray. It's that your heart is not programmed right. Your heart is not programmed right. It takes somebody who knows how to sit down. You see, when we were, when we were young Christians and we, we didn't know better, we always judged maturity by how active you, you, you were looked as a Christian. Ah, I like this sister. She took my lip and worship because she has energy in her. Till we discover that you can only bring down God's presence when you know how to sit down in silence. It is good to make noise for uh, God. It's wonderful. It's good to shout. We all have to, to uh, shout. But before you shout, learn to be what? Silent. This is what many young people don't know and will not learn. Why? We feel that being useful means that you must be loud every time. Loud every day. No. Jesus, Jesus formed a habit of meditation so much that the Bible says he will always go away to the mountains to uh, pray to sit down in silence to sit down in the in the in the thoughts of his heart to see what God would say to him so Jesus kept saying I do only what I see the father doing when Jesus raised um who was it again? As I was from the, the grave. Remember what he, he said. He said, Lord, I say this for their benefit. So his words of prayer was because the people around him to hear what he was saying. Without saying a word, he had already raised him from the dead. How? Silence. Before he called him out of the grave in his heart. <laughs> he had settled the issue before he came in. He said, This this sleep is not unto death. Why? 
he has settled it in his heart. Brethren, what is confusing you about your life? Take time and sit down with God in silence. Let him speak to your heart. Let him arrange his, let him arrange the template for your life in your heart. Proverbs 4.26 says, guard your heart for out of it springs what the issues of life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. If you don't come to a place in your life as a, a young Christian where you tell yourself, I will guard my heart with all diligence. With all diligence. You will befriend anybody. You will watch anything. You will listen to anything. And the interesting thing is this. You don't guard your heart by staying away from bad things. You guard your heart by programming it with the word of God. So that whatever enters your heart only produces God. Amen. Are you here? Are you here? Everybody here, you must learn, learn, learn every morning before the break of day, wake up. Sit down on your own. Open your Bible. Or if you want to uh, pray, you, you pray. But don't shout. Let God drop details of your life in your heart. Let him organize the template for which you will live your life in your heart. Amen. Amen. So I've, 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 I've made three, three points and I didn't say them out. The first one is this. He that searches the heart knows the mind of God for him. Romans 8, 26-27. The power of prayer is in searching your heart to know the will of God for you and what you ought to pray about. I, I know that there are some of us here, you have your, your, your maybe you have your, your prayer points booklet. Monday I'm praying for daddy, mommy, auntie, uncle. Tuesday, my future husband, my future wife, my children, and school. Wednesday, my bank account, uh, my business, uh, what about Thursday? You are now finished prayer point, and I want you to know, okay, what do I add on Thursday? Uh, okay, Sister Nkechi said that she was sick. Sister Nkechi, Uncle John, no, 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 no. When you go to pray, leave your prayer point behind. Say, Holy Spirit, show me what to pray about. Because the, the thing is this, you may come with your own burden before God, but God has solved it. I want you to pray about something else. So, when you come to pray before God, stop trying to give him prayer points. Sit down and say, God, show me what to pray about. Before you start blowing tongues in the spirit, set your heart and ask yourself, what is the, where is the Holy Spirit leading me to? What is he asking me to pray about today? Because only him can see the beginning and the end of that day in front of, of you. There may be an accident in front of you or somebody that you ought to uh, meet or a destiny helper in front of you. And when you go to pray, you are, you are thinking of, of how you want to finish school with first class, which is good. I want to be very rich in the future. But he's telling you, there's accident to accident to switch your, your prayer point. You are saying, no, Lord, I must be rich in the future. I, no, 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 no. Young Christian, shift your mind away from what you think is important to you. And let God speak to you. Let God direct your heart. Let God show you what is more important in that season of your life. Amen. Amen. If your neighbor is sleeping, wake them up. And, I've, and I have shown us that even God operates by the same principle. 
God didn't just make, make man, just, okay, let me make man and let him be there. No. If you notice in Genesis 1, from 1 to 26, every time God made anything, he said, and he made them after their kind. Mean that God had a, how do I put it? Okay, let me, let me say this. If you want to produce this, um, what do you, do you call it? Pulpit. And you want to produce in mass quantity, what do you do? You design, right? You d- design how it look like so that when you pour the hot glass in, inside it, it will take shape by itself. So you are making this pulpit after its kind. So everything God made, he had a template already. He had an idea already. The same way it is with you. To bring forth things from, to bring forth things into the physical realm, you first harness the grace for it in the spiritual realm, in your heart. Amen. Let's look at this very quickly. How do you program your heart? Proverbs 4 from verse 20. How do you program your heart? Proverbs 4 from verse 20. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my saying. Number one point. Thank you. Number one point. My son, pay attention to my words. Young Christians, I am also young like you also. The first thing you need to do with your life is to submit yourself. Any young person that wants to go far in life, you must submit yourself to a higher authority. It can be your father in the Lord, it can be your pastor, it can be anybody that God leads you you to, but you must submit yourself. Do you know why? You don't know everything. And as, a, and as a young person, unless you learn from the mistakes of your elders, you will make the same mistakes. Somebody must tell you, Oga, this church you want to begin. When I began my own, this is what I faced. So you now have pre-information about what you are going to face in the future. And you know how to arrange your life to face it. I discovered that many of the challenges my father, my father faced, I faced the exact same thing. Many of them. In fact, when I started facing some of them, I started asking myself, why is this going on? And I had to just shift my focus to his own life and see how he faced it. So many things don't take me unaware because I have seen somebody who faced the same thing. Maybe he failed or he passed, but I saw the the decisions he took and how it affected him. Sometimes as young people, we don't want to learn from our elders. You feel that, oh, the way mommy is saying this thing, this boy that I am having feelings for, they, they don't understand how I feel. Until they don't break your heart. And then you start knowing how they were warning you that you, you, sh- you shouldn't feel. Many times, young people, we are so full of energy. When your elders tell you, calm down, you say no. You see, I've seen it in before. No, calm down. Find somebody who is older than you, who can advise you and tell you, sit down here. Don't go anywhere. There are people in my life, if they tell me, come now, I've left you people and I have gone home. 
anywhere I reach, you, you will finish the message on my behalf. I've gone home. Who is the authority figure in your life? I'm not saying you have one friend that will always give you advice. Leave your friends alone. This verse says, my son, he's talking to somebody who, who he can trust. Paul says to, to uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2, says, Timothy, my true child in the faith. Timothy, my true child in, in the faith. This one is not just a child. He's a true child. I can trust things in his hand. You must come to a place in your life where somebody can give you advice and you will listen. And I'm not saying you should have 10 people. You can have 10 mentors and 10 mentees or whatever you want to call them. But you can only have one father in this life. Either your physical father, or, uh, sorry, either your biological father or your spiritual father, anyone you want or whatever it is. But there will be somebody in your life, one person, who can call you to order? Number two, you must be able to pay attention to the words that are spoken to you. If you must program your heart, somebody must teach you. Either the Holy Spirit, which is very easy for us, you have the Holy Spirit, He's always there with you. But the problem is this many people are hearing what the Holy Spirit is not saying. You hear many people preach the word of God and they are bringing out mysteries that, I have, that don't even ex exist. Lazy Christians who will not sit down and let the Holy Spirit work on them first. Because like I said before, if your heart is not right, if your heart is not programmed well, whatever God is saying, you will be hearing something else. For example, if this young sister wearing white hair, wave your hand so they'll see you. Uh -huh. If she's if she's she's a prey, and God says, Brother John. Now it depends on what she's praying about. If she's praying about who buy her food in the morning, it can be Brother John. She can be praying about who she will marry, it can be Brother John. Hope you don't know anybody called John in your life. Before you say that, I'm, I'm showing you your husband. Then you say, if she's looking for life partner, it can be Brother John. But the question is this, when God said Brother John, what was he referring to? When God showed you that dream that you had, who was he re referring to? Many people have carried dream to come marry wife that God did not give to them. People have opened ministry that God didn't send them to, to, to uh, open. And now things are becoming hard and they're asking God, why? The first thing is, when he showed you that vision or that dream, what was he saying? But because your heart was somewhere else, whatever God said didn't make sense to you. It was what he wanted God to say to you that you were looking for. Who knows? Maybe Brother John is the person that she has to go and sow seed in his life. And she said, me, sow seed for what? To him. Who, who, who is Brother John? Do you know the amazing thing about life? Many people have been passing their, their destiny helpers almost every day. And they don't know. Joseph's destiny helper was in prison with him. If it is you that they put you and another person inside chains, and God said, That's a destiny helper. Say, God, this one in chains, this one. I should, I should interpret his, his uh, dream for him. God, he's in chains with me. Oh. Look at him in chains. I'm in chains. How will he help me? God, you see that man at the gate who is free? Bring him. Bring him my way, oh Lord. I have seen that he is able to help me. God is saying, look at your life. Say, God, no, no, no. That person. 
Lord, see, he's even driving Jeep. The AC is, oh Lord, that's my destiny helper. You have written letter to your destiny helper ten times. You say, I will see you next week. I'll see you next week. I'm coming next week. They keep telling you next week. You have been here next week for the past two years. Next week, next week, next week. All because you're not, you are not eager to hear what God has to say. When you go to, to a break, clear your heart to remove all the antinkechi, brajon, no, fried rice, fried beans. Empty your heart. Say, God, what are you saying to me today? It to help you avoid issues because some people here have taken decisions that God didn't send them to take. And they're asking God why. Why, why is this thing happening this way? And God is telling you, 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 you gave the wrong interpretation to that dream. All because your heart was somewhere else. God will help somebody this morning. I said, God will help somebody this morning. Thank you. Verse 21. Okay, from the end of verse 20 it says, Incline your ear, your ears to my sayings. Let them not escape from your heart. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. What is God saying? God is saying, whatever you thought you knew about life, empty it. Take my words and arrange them in your heart. Incline your ears to my saying. Give attention to God's word in your life. For they are life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. They are life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. There's so much to say on this alone. But the point is this. When you learn how to sit down on the word of God and drink of the word of God it becomes life to you such that there are things that no, normal people cannot face but once you show up you can handle it why there is a life force at work in you then the next verse says guard your heart after you have you have programmed the heart with God's word you have found somebody that can teach you, you sat down on, on, on the person, you have received God's word from him or her, you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you also. So you are now a child of God who is, who is, who is booming in God's word. God's word is seated in your heart. When you've done all this, you now guard your heart with what? All diligence. Why? Okay, let me use the same thing I, I used before. That bass guitar that, that is, is there. If the young man used this chair to hit their bass, what sound would the bass produce? Yes, but it will still produce the same sound, right? If he hits the thing with his, his hand to produce the same sound, that bass guitar will never sound like a drum set or a keyboard or any other thing than what it was designed to sound like. The same way, when you program your heart right with God's word, everything you hear in life will produce the same effect, God. When your heart is programmed right, people can hate you, you will still love them. People can abuse you, you will still love them. People can say things evil ab about you, you will still love them. You will never utter any word of evil about them. Not because you cannot say it, but because you are already programmed to do what is right by God's word. When you can sort out the, the issues of your heart, you can face anything in life. 
you can face anything in life. When your heart is programmed right, you can face anything in life. Why? Because it is programmed right. Because you have decided what your life will always be. And that is why there are people here you have faced difficulties and they think you have lost. All because you failed one exam. They think that you have been defeated. All because your account looks empty. The other day I was asking some people if they have bank accounts. They didn't carry their hand up. I said, so your account said, sir, everything. First one said, that account is as if I don't have any account. It's useless to me. When you program your heart right, no matter what they do to you, you will never be defeated in life. David was chased for many years. He still became king. David was sought after to be killed for many times. He still became king. Why? He was a man after God's heart. If you sort out the issue of your heart, I can assure you, you will never be defeated. Never. You may look hopeless. You may look poor. You may look broke. You may look useless to them. But when God sees the right programming in your heart, <sighs> weeping may endure for a night. But joy will surely come in the morning. Why? You are programmed right. They always say to have a good marriage, be a good spouse. Before you put on your makeup on your face, fix this one. Before you have money, like I was saying the other day, so, so people are only humble because they don't have anything. So they are humble. Uncle, uh, they call you, uh, let me use Brother John again. Brother John, come to, come to church tomorrow morning by 5 a.m. Yes, sir. By 5 he's here. On time, very early. Sir, I like this Brother John. He's very faithful. Ah, good boy. May God bless you. Amen. Next week, come for, for a prayer meeting. I will just have, by, before time he has showed up. Ah, he's here early. God bless him. Amen. After one year, but John has hammered five million in five different businesses. So he now has 25 million. But John, we are praying tomorrow morning. Eh. Pastor, you see, they, the way I'm feeling now, eh, you know, I've been very busy the past two weeks. Let me just sleep small. Money will only reveal what is in your heart. Finish. That's all. Money will only show you who you are. That's it. Ah, I can never drink in this life. Eh. Wait until you have money. Ah, see all these girls. Rubbish girls. I can't talk to them. Wait until you have money. <laughs> when you have options and you do not choose the option, then I know that you are faithful. Before God lifts you, fix your heart. Before you go and find honey, sweetie, what, which are name do, do they call themselves? Talk, you have been doing it before. Tell me, tell me what you have been calling your, your person. What do you call them? Baby. baby. Not babe. Baby, so any, anybody. Baby. Baby. Babe. Oh, no. Baby, how are you? Before they call you baby, and your teeth will open from here to here. Fix your heart. Before tomorrow, they will, they will give you church to pastor. One person will come late. God punish you. Fix your heart. That way, there are, there, are, there are some of you here. You know one person that is that everybody always hails. But you have come close to that person. You say, ah, this person there, the way he is. Very wicked. 
Why? When God was bringing them up, I was telling them, fix your heart, fix your heart. They said, God, no. I want money. I want big church. I want big crowd. Thank God that you are this size now. If you were bigger than this, it may be difficult to handle. It may be. Deal with your heart now. 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 Like this uncle now. Who knows? Maybe the next one year, you start seeing him in some billboard somewhere. And then you call him Pastor. Uh, no, what's that one that they called him before? Apostle. Say, come on. Ah! I was dancing with you at. I said, I know. Calm down. And God will definitely lift him. Definitely lift him. I know. God would definitely lift him. There's something about him. Hi. Do I have time? I've told that I will go. I don't have. Uh, there's something about him. There's somebody that always prayed for you when you were young, right? Who? He. <laughs> That prayer has gone far. Yes. That prayer has gone far. There are ways that have opened for him. You see how he was singing and people were, were dancing. It's not because his voice is nice. Did that thing. Or because they are playing loop. It's a lie. You come and play loop and dance. Come. Give them mic. Come and dance. And let's see. Somebody has invested prayer in his life. And do you know why she did it? They used to make fun of her, right? Yeah. And she said, God, use this one and satisfy me. Brother, God is going to lift you. Please, look at me. When he lifts you, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget. If you forget, the day I catch you, I'll remind you. Do you know why? Many gospel singers have become so big today. When you call them, they'll tell you money first before they come. Don't try it. Because you are being lifted by prayer, not by money. There are doors that will open for you and you will not know how. But God will do it. There's a, a lady in the audience. You've been praying every morning. And you've been asking God, how long shall this be? You're from the east. From uh, around here. If you're, if, you're, if you're, you can wave your hand, let me see. But you're in the audience, I know, I'm sure. Your season of dryness will soon end. And God will begin to give you ideas for what you want to do. My prayer for all of us here is this. That God will raise young men and women who will be giants in this life. You will be giants in this life. Oh God, if for no other reason but for the grace of God that came with me today. The same way you favored me beyond my expectations. Single out those of them in this audience whose season has come. Father, I pray that favor that they have not seen before, ideas that they cannot explain. Let me say this. Let me share this testimony. 
please, I'm saying this with every atom of humility in my heart. I'm not trying to uh, brag, please. Hear me. Many years ago, God was trying to show me what is in, f- in front of me. I was going back to, to a school. I schooled somewhere in West Africa, not, not far. I booked my flight because normally I fly from Uyo to Lagos, Lagos to a school. So I booked flight, everything. On the day I was supposed to, to uh, go, I packed my things, came to the church, told mommy I'm going. I said, ah, wait, wait, wait. Some people came to see daddy and they heard I was going to uh, Lagos. I said, ah, you're going to Lagos. I said, also, oh, don't worry, we will drop you. Drop me how? As if you want to use car. No. They came with a private plane. I said, hey. I said, don't worry, we'll, we'll drop you. So I quietly, you know, I've already bought tickets, but when they say you want to fly, fly in a private plane, you, you forget about the, the ticket. We got to the, 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 the plane, boarded. Brethren, <laughs> there is plane, and there is plane. There is plane where you enter and you are thinking, oh, hope we will not crash today. There is plane where you enter, you'll be like, God, let this plane not come down. May I remain in this place? I entered the airline. This is the funny part about it. Those people were not going to Lagos. They were going somewhere else. We flew to Potakot. And we came down. So ah, we are like, I'm going to Lagos. So said, oh, don't worry, don't worry. They came down and left me alone in the plane. With the pilots and the air hostesses, I flew alone from Potakot to Lagos. Only me. Now, the problem was that I was so embarrassed by the favor that they were asking me, do you want anything? I said, no. If it is today, brethren, ah, I have, I have, I have, I have made my order already and kept it for another time that I went on another plane. <laughs> With, I flew alone in that plane, and I kept asking myself, what kind of favor is this? That's when I dis- I dis- I discovered that every plane doesn't land at the same place. The same airport, though, not the same place. Why people came down to enter the airport and why I came down, it's not the same place. I passed through a different part of the airport. Only me. People were looking at, who is this boy? Who sent him here? I just, I, I carried back, I was going to where I was going to. When your season for favor has come, they may try to stop you somehow. But God will force the favor on you. There are other things I can say, but time has gone. Tomorrow we'll take our time and and really, really pray. We will really pray tomorrow. But I'm saying this to you today. Program your heart. When you have, when you have fulfilled God's demands on you, the lifting will begin to come. Like him, there's only one thing that is left. One thing. For him. Just one thing that is left. That's all he needs. Once he gets that thing right, it may be hard for you to you people to bring him here again. No? But he will come. May my God favor you. May my God favor you. The same way God gave me business ideas that I didn't know were around me. God will give you those same ideas. There's a young man here. They have written off your family and your family members. But you are the one that God will use to disgrace them. It is you God will use to disgrace them. It is you God will use to wipe away the tears of your parents. And I'm seeing business. 
I'm seeing business. You'll be young, but I'm seeing business. You will make it. You will make it. Father, I pray for every one of us here. As we go from here, as we lay on our beds, let your hand rest on our head. Open our eyes to see what you have laid in, inside of us. Let people begin to see themselves where you have called them to be. Let our dreams become visions of the night where you speak to us and give us counsel. There are some of you here. From now hence, henceforth, you will stop making unnecessary mistakes. Yes. There's somebody here even, you, you almost, you entered into a relationship that has affected you. It won't happen again. It won't happen again. God will show you the way out. God will show you the way out. Lift your hands and give him thanks this morning. And thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his, his goodness. Your life has taken a new direction. Your life has been transformed. God has lifted you. You will be the joy of your family. You will be the joy of your community. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen.